Hey everyone. So uh, this is something new that we're trying here um, with Ashy and Legacy FM. We're doing uh, these. Um, we're, we don't know what we're calling this yet. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna figure that out and, and come back at that and maybe get some some input for everybody. But we're gonna be doing these uh, these micro learning videos where we pull in experts from the industry, uh, facilities managers, uh, code geeks, whatever, right? And just uh, and have this topic of, of conversation um, and. Uh, I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Josh Brackett, uh, and this is I'm, Lindsay Brackett. I'm Lindsay Brackett. She's the real host. Let's just be real. <laughs> and uh, today we have the one and only Chad Beebe. Oh. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes, I'm Chad Beebe. Awesome. And for those of you that don't know Chad, he is the, I'm going to get it wrong, Chad, Deputy Executive Director of Ashy. That is right. Okay. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. So um, these, these videos are going to be, they're, we're not going to be too long, but we're going to stay on one topic um, and just kind of talk through. And, and again, so uh, if you're, if you're, we're going to, this is all on, on our, our YouTube channel. So make sure you're subscribed and you ring the bell uh, to be notified when we, when we do uh, new videos, but our topic for today is what makes healthcare facilities different? Uh, which is a, that's a loaded question. We didn't we didn't prepare, Chad. We probably should have done that. So. <laughs> it's yeah, a great so. question, even not preparing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So where do where do you even start? <laughs> yeah. That, that well, we we bring this question up because there are a lot of skilled trades that come from other industries. And not everyone has the benefit of working up in healthcare facilities management. And so, especially if you're coming from a different industry um, and you have a different background, you might not know everything to know about healthcare and why things are done a little bit differently in healthcare compared to other occupancies. So there's a lot that goes into that, not just on the code side, not just because there's patients in the building, um, but there's just a lot that makes hospitals and healthcare occupancy different. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot of that right now at ASHI. Um, I, I've heard a lot of uh, stories about uh, new facility managers coming into uh, healthcare facilities that have previously had experience in business occupancies, for example, and they're, they're really new to this entire environment, and uh, they've got questions. Uh, needless to say, they've got a lot of questions. Uh, it's very different to be a building manager or facilities manager in healthcare than it is a, uh, a regular business occupancy or any other occupancy. Um, but we've seen a lot of this because right now, you know, K through 12 uh, doesn't have, uh, you know, students in a lot of their, their, their classrooms. And so uh, unfortunately, some of the facilities people have had to look for other employment. Uh, they've, they've been let go and they have found that there's a definite need in, in healthcare. So a lot of healthcare facilities have been hiring. But, um, you know, if you think about your K through 12, days, you uh, remember that uh, you every quarter you did a fire drill and you evacuated the building and everybody went to the playground and then it was hard to get everybody back together because you were playing football all of a sudden, right? <laughs> um, we don't do that in healthcare, right? And that's, the, that's surprising and shocking to a lot of people. It's like, wait, you don't evacuate these very vulnerable uh, people? And the truth is, no, we don't. We have to protect in place or defend in place. And uh, that's why we design our buildings the way they are. And uh, it, it's very important that we maintain those features the way they are so we can continue to do that. Yeah, that's what a are great some point. Of, yeah, what, yeah are, what are some of those features? Um, the biggest one is by far compartmentation. And we always explain this in our, uh, all of our ASHI courses. It's, it's like the submarine design, right? You have multiple different compartments. If you have a flood in any one of those compartments, you can shut that off mm -hmm. and the rest of the compartments are safe. Well, this hospital is exactly the same thing. We're looking at uh, dividing every floor up into at least two different compartments. If you have a fire in one compartment, um, you can move patients from one compartment to the adjacent compartment until that fire is taken care of. Um, actually, and even before that, a lot of times you just need to shut the door to the to the room of origin, and that will take care of most, most of the fires. You may not have to evacuate all those patients right away, but that's your first response in a fire situation. If it's 
worse and you need to actually do a little bit more evacuation, you can go vertical from floor to floor then. And uh, uh, usually, you know, that would be the uh, last line of defense that you need. But then you would be able to start your planning for if you had to do the next step, which is evacuate the building, you could be getting ambulances lined up and ready to start taking uh, patients to, to a safe place. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I was actually, uh, funny that you mentioned closing the door is, is the first line of defense, right? I mean, you got to let uh, sprinkler systems do their job and, and kick in. Um, we had a, a I, I was part of the hospital that, that had a fire in one of the patient rooms at a um, somebody vaping, right, with, on oxygen, of course, right, so, and, uh, and we had to, to, you know, the nurses were like, well, what happened if, if, if the fire was out of control, and, and I said, that's, that's where you have to make that hard decision, right, of, of what, what to do, I said, closing that door allows, allows the, the, the systems to activate the way that they're supposed to, right, and that's, but it's also completely, um, counterintuitive to, to nursing and, and protecting patients and things like that. So, yeah. 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 And unfortunately, sometimes, you know, that, you know, there may be patients involved intimately with the fire that, you know, you have to make that hard decision, you know, uh, you, you, you gotta say, you gotta save the, the unit and all the, all the patients. Oh, and go. I've seen that happen. Unfortunately, that's what happened in a number of nursing home fires. Um, gosh, about 15 years ago now. And that's why there was such a push to make sure that uh, nursing homes were sprinkler. And uh, so there's a lot of grants given by CMS for that. Fortunately, in hospitals, we've had a long history of making sure that they're completely sprinkler throughout. I think one of the mis, um, uh, misunderstandings about sprinkler systems is typically that they're intended to put out the fire. And that's not really the intent of a sprinkler. Um, but we do have a really good track record of that actually happening, right? And the reality is, is closing that room off and letting that sprinkler do its work, what that's doing is buying you time. That's what it's about, is buying you time to make the next decision. And so you're not rushed to go right to evacuation. And, you know, like, like I said, unfortunately, we've had a lot of really good uh, experience with sprinklers. And... Uh, you know, a lot of times you don't have to make a next decision. It's the fire is out and now it's the fire department coming in, shutting off the water. Uh, Cause that's the next problem you're going to have. Yeah. Right? <laughs> There's a lot of water. Oh <laughs> you know? yeah. Oh yeah. And, and water's not good in healthcare facilities either. <laughs> no, no, it's not, not at all. No. So maybe, maybe we talk about, um, maybe that's where we go next. What, what about like from a um, water or air infection control you know, side of things like what? What are the, let's talk through that. Um, what makes why hospitals are different? Yeah, you know, uh, infection prevention um, is a very big issue in healthcare facilities. So you know, now we've had you know a fire and we have water all over the floor and in our sheetrock. Um, there's going to be some work. You're going to have to remove a lot of that sheetrock, most likely, because uh, it's going to be hard to to prevent mold growth. And uh, once you have mold in the, uh, in, in the walls that could potentially be uh, distributed through the air, it, you ha really have to look at the type of occupants in the area. Um, you know, we do a lot of risk assessments in, in healthcare. Uh, you know, you really got to look to see, you know, what type of patients are these? If they're oncology patients or other patients that might have uh, uh, um, um, immunity pr problems, you're going to have to probably take that a lot more seriously than you might in maybe a rehab unit where, you know, it's been some, some, you know, knee or hip replacements or something like that. Probably not as bad, but you know, there's still dangers there. There's a risk. It's just a different level of risk that you have to address it. Um, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the, the risk assessments because uh, Ashley provides some really good resources and tools related to like pre-construction risk assessment or infection control risk assessment. So do you want to share a little bit about, what resources are available for, for ASHI membership in the community? Yeah, I think uh, the best thing to do is go onto the ASHI website and, and search for risk assessments. And I, I, you know, I think the most common one that, and a lot of people don't realize that the ICRA, Infection Control Risk Assessment, was actually originally created by ASHI. Um, it was created, gosh, 15, 18 years ago, by oh. maybe a little bit longer ago, um, before my time at ASHI. Um, 
And uh, it was it was created be because it was starting. We were just then starting to recognize all of these um, problems that are being created by construction, and and a lot of <clears throat> very smart people doing a lot of really good research, um, identifying you know the actual impacts of construction on patients really caused everybody to go, whoa, wait a second, what are we, what are we doing here? We had never even known this 20 years in before that. We didn't even know that this was a, a hazard really. You know, there's a lot of people that I think that suspected it, but until we really had that concrete evidence that showed that there was a, a problem, uh, you know, we didn't really, really address it. Part of uh, going through that process and developing the infection control risk assessment and then putting it in as a requirement in the FGI guidelines and, uh, you know, we put that ICRA, that first ICRA form out there to the world and said, use this. Um, you know, our good friends at uh, APIC helped us uh, uh, develop that and promote that back then. And uh, it's kind of, it's become the industry standard. Everybody has some version of that original form. And uh, so that's probably the most prevalent, you know, uh, risk assessment. But we uh, provide a lot of other tools and resources for for risk and for assessing risk. Uh, one of the more recent issues is about just determining wet locations and operating rooms, for example. Uh, the code changed a few years back to say that your operating room is a wet location unless you determine otherwise. So the question came up, how do we determine otherwise? And working with um, our colleagues over at AORN and APIC, we developed this risk assessment tool, which basically leads you through a number of questions and what type of uh, uh, systems you have in place to mitigate potential standing liquids in the OR. And uh, it would give you an answer in the end, whether you were a wet location or not. Um, so, so there's a lot of tools on ASHI's website like that. Um, and there's other things that just simply to document risk. Um, you know, you assess it and then you document it. And I think a lot of our tools are like that, like the NFPA 99 risk assessment tool, which you'll be able to go through and identify one, one of the four categories for any part and piece and place in the healthcare facility. Um, so with that information, you can determine other things, what regulations apply to that. And, you know, how, how do I, you know, what do I need to do for preventative maintenance for that? You know, if it's a critical piece of equipment, then our pre preventative maintenance can be much different than than if it's not a critical piece of equipment. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So um, I think the last thing it's, this may this one may be a loaded question, but you know because because occupants of our buildings are um, patients that are sometimes incapable of self preservation. I know that's a word that we uh, phrase that we use a lot, right? In healthcare, um, you know, we're heavily regulated. Why? <laughs> well, yeah, the million dollar question. Why? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I think that that's primarily the reason is because of the, the occupants. And I think, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, depending on how you look at it, the primary reason is because we get reimbursement. Yeah. And yeah. We, we're reimbursed by uh, uh, for our patients and the care that we provide our patients by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And that process, they have a condition of participation in that program. And that's actually what it's called, conditions of participation. And because they uh, uh, require you to meet those in order to get reimbursed, it's a very big deal for healthcare facilities. Um, it's uh, more prevalent that we have Medicare, Medicaid patients in our healthcare facilities than other insurers. So um, it's very important that we are able to uh, basically build that insurance in healthcare facilities. That's very cool. Yeah. And what we'll do, and actually, I'm glad you brought that up because you can see it behind me. I haven't erased it yet, you know, we, but we did a video on the condition of participations and we'll actually, uh, it's on this, this, this YouTube channel. So we'll, we'll put a link right here for you guys to click. Um, to, to go check out that video as well. But, um, you know, there, there are probably a hundred other things we could talk about, about why, <laughs> why hospitals are different and why healthcare facilities are different than, than other occupancies. But um, anything else, any other big, big glaring ones that you can think of? <laughs> uh, boy, yeah, like you said, there's, there's probably, we could go on for several <laughs> hours about the differences. It's, it's more about what's not different. <laughs> 
<laughs> there, Probably yeah. two minutes talking about that. And, um, you know, there's there's just a, a, a completely different demographic of users. And, uh, you know, I think the other big difference, the glaring difference is that we're operation 24 seven. You don't mm -hmm. close them down and, you know, you don't take holidays off. Uh, you're always there and there's always somebody there. So there's always somebody there that's got to be responsible for, for ensuring the safety of these uh, uh, patients that, like you said, they're not capable of self-preservation. So um, somebody has got to be there for them. And uh, at the end of the day, that's, that's what we're all here for is, is to help them get better and get out of the facility. And that's our, our main goal is to actually get them as, as best as we can possibly get them in the healthcare setting and then get them home to where they can recover with family and friends and, and uh, get to a, a speedy full recovery. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, okay. So you're going to come back and join us later on sometime, Chad? Definitely. Happy okay. to. Okay. Awesome. Great. So uh, that, that concludes this episode of unnamed interview with Chad. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time.